it's not that people of Ladakh will not complain about uh, nature and mountains, birds. The word ecology already exists in Ladakhi language, vocabulary, or environment, or uh, ecology, or whatever you may call it. But uh, my own understanding uh, from the earlier times when I was trying to that uh, our previous generation was far more aware about their nature, aware about, conscious about their environment. Even if they had to build a house, they had to think about the nature, whether it is facing the sun or the moon or the river or the mountain, where they are not wasting cultivable land or uh, whether it is closer to water and most importantly the most important aspect of the ecology was La Lu. I think the La and Lu was the, an, an, an interpretation and, uh, of uh, ecology or environment around herself. So when you want to build a house uh, he or she is conscious about the, the, the Lu's uh, you know which is the, the, the living creatures beneath and above the uh, earth. Uh, that was a very simple way of understanding Ladakhi environment and nature and ecosystem. And disturbing that, for example, water was very sacred, very sacred. And I remember if you dirty water, my grandmother used to tell me, you will be born as a lizard in the next life. You know, in fact, I, there, there is a story. Uh, General J.J. Singh, who was our uh, chief once upon a time, uh, and then he became governor of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, two of us uh, were there in the uh, Earth Summit in Rio, many, many years ago. And uh, General J.J. Singh gave a presentation on Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, lovely mountain, river, things. And he gave a very uh, interesting uh, caveat there that wherever he went in Arunachal Pradesh, he could drink water straight away from the stream, you know, without filtering and without cleaning. So, but he couldn't explain why the waters of uh, Tawang or these areas are so clean. So I had to intervene that General Sahib doesn't know that uh, the, the children in Tawang area have been taught by their grandparents not to dirty water. Uh, issues. Uh, but uh, I think it's very significant today because this book has come out uh, on the occasion of the International uh, Nature Conservation Day, number one. Number two, I think more significant is that in the history of Ladakh, this is the first ever attempt by an author to talk about the real issues. This is the crux of the matter. This is our identity. Nature is our identity. We are children of mountains and nature. We don't come from sea, we come from mountains. And our identity is linked with this nature around us, with mountains, this beautiful birds, uh, flora, fauna. Uh, I've been to many uh, regions in the world, like in Paris, in <coughs> Spain, where the bus people live. I've been to uh, Ural Mountains. I lived in Tanshan Mountains. I've been to Altai Mountains also. So every society, community, and regions, they are linked with that particular nature, that particular environment in which they live. I think the rest of the things that we have been talking about for so many years are artificially constructed. When they talk about history, they talk about many, many issues. These are main weight. These are main weight uh, uh, issues. And these are artificially created uh, part of our life. But this is the natural part of our life. And if you protect nature, you protect yourself. There is no other way, including uh, ten numbers of, you know, constitutional protection will not save you unless you save your own nature and environment. 
this is very important because uh, for a specific community like us, very microscopic community like us, we need to link up with certain things. And linking up with nature is the most important thing to do. And I congratulate uh, uh, Tashire to, uh, to come out with this kind of idea. I have not come across with anyone. I have I've gone through that book by Salim Ali long time ago on the birds of Nimada, um, Chakram Doom and all that. Many, many years ago when I was in college or something like that. I think it's no more now, it's, it's dead. It's a tremendous effort and what the Kaas Kodran Leodi mentioned that I think this is the first effort by a Ladakhi and so that is a moment of pride for us. I think we all of us should take pride in that. And I have been trying to understand these animals actually, not actually photographing that much, you know, but being with them and just trying to learn their way. And uh, so I really have been to the interior parts of the wilderness of Ladakh, spent a lot of time with these animals and I'm really happy that now uh, Tashi and several other people have come up with this tremendous passion for nature and wildlife in Lata, which is very important at this particular stage to raise awareness among the people of Lata, not uh, among outsiders, uh, of course for outsiders, but among the Ladakhis also we really need to make such kind of efforts so, we that, so that we know, understand the value of these species and uh, if you talk about ecosystem services, just to emphasize this point that we derive so much from ecosystem, from nature, and somewhere we really don't appreciate that and uh, don't really put a value to that. That's very important. Recently, there has been a study actually which looked at the many of these ecosystem services and they found out that uh, uh, in a place like Changtang, a particular household is deriving in the tune of some 30 lakhs per household uh, per annum. You know, that's, which is a, we are really getting a lot from nature, but we are giving back very little, which is, which is I think, concerning. We need to preserve them for ourselves, as uh, what uh, uh, Kasi Funsokli and Kasko already mentioned, that we should really protect them not for themselves but for for our uh, for us also because they really played a huge role in sustaining communities like us in these high mountains otherwise we say that uh, there's a saying that uh, I mean there's a joke also in many ways people say that we got left us high and dry both literally and figuratively and I think resource scarcity is there but if you really look at nature very closely and, and this is just a, the tip of the iceberg I would say and there are a lot of species to see, explore and glorify and uh, appreciate their services. Uh, conservation has been almost uh, perfect. I remember when I was in DC today, one army officer shot a chapeau somewhere near the coast. And then we made it a point to really find him so that Others don't uh, follow suit. And we had fined then 1,000 rupees of army measurement. There was a lot of hue and cry in the army. We have always been killing uh, games like this. We, we can't pay this. And then I sought the help of his GOC, then General himself, for drinks. And he said, Of course, you know, uh, unless we find this fellow, the conservation of so he made sure that uh, the army major paid his uh, fine for his one thousand. So I think he added some five hundred rupees more. That's how the army was roped uh, into uh, wildlife conservation. <coughs> Today I find that last year on, you know, when he was traveling to Taru, he saw uh, a herd of about thirty. Shapos. Buddha? Yeah. Thirty shapos. I, I, at least I could recognize one shapo with So they were you know, roaming about without bothering about the cars moving on the highway. And I was really impressed with the 
state of conservation of wildlife has been so good. In the past, I think uh, people used to hunt. I think recently there was a hunting case <coughs> on this side, the press side. This was brought to me. I noticed it was concerned people by the people who are concerned administration, by the people themselves. So, this is the case with birds. As I said, we used to hunt chakor and the birds in the winter when the snow heavy. And I read in one story about I getting a chakor the first time. And without going out to kill it, I went to someone to kill it for me and he refused to do it. Yes, I gave it, shared with him half of the. <laughs> So I, I refused to do it. Then he said, you kill like this, and I won't kill it for you. So I killed it, I tried to kill it by breaking the backbone. And somehow, you know, he, he repaired the, the backbone, and then flew off, and I started. Uh, now this is basically a book of photographs. And I would expect uh, each species of bird and uh, animal and to be supported by a brief description so that it becomes a complete book. And it, uh, it becomes a complete book on the rare flora and fauna of Madame with description. I think it could be one of the best, best selling books uh, written about, uh, about the flora and fauna of Madame. Now, I, I found while going through these uh, some omissions uh, in the man manner of speaking. Perhaps some of them may even be extinct. So I have made a list of these and for your consideration, if you can add these also to this, then uh, become more comprehensive. Now some of these are, one is, uh, you know, I would have expected a, a photograph of a dawn while young. You can add this from Changtang area, perhaps it will be one of the uh, contributions to the knowledge of the values. Then, uh, I think Farah is one, a uh, wild dog, Farah. I, I, I found the Farah missing in here. You can also have a photograph of Farah uh, from somewhere, or maybe in the future you can have this one. Uh, Farah used to be very common. But now, either it's an extreme chilling area, chilling area, you may still find it. Then, otter, chushang. Chushang used to be very common when we were young. There used to be just uh, water uh, fishing. But now, it, it, uh, it's uh, extinct. Similarly, in birds, for example, the weaver bird used to be very common in places like that. They, they would go weave their nests and then sing really, as if someone is going on an instrument. Weaver bird, I don't know what, we used to call it ceremony of Golden Orion. Golden bird. Then, uh, you know, um, I think the conservation of wild animals in Ladakh, I think one of the most uh, successful stories in Ladakh, uh, conservation has been the right bond, and then flew off, and I started chasing him for, for a while before he disappeared. So uh, we used to hunt a lot of uh, chocos in winter when it snowed. The shucklings must be uh, into in other, other places also. So now, uh, even uh, such hunting is also taboo. Uh, why it's important to have conservation of wildlife? Conservation of wildlife is important for natural balance, eco balance. You know, the, the nature has given uh, a, a function to every species of uh, species of bird and so the human uh, wildlife conflict is not there. All this
food for the dark. And today, one thing I forgot to invite um, the librarian of Lay, uh, because in Lay, Lay library, I think we have hardly a book which is writing by uh, own author. Uh, so these are my dreams. So thank you very much once again.